This imperative for care also extends to the teaching about resting on the Sabbath day, which is for human beings also to preserve creation. Indeed, from the book of Deuteronomy, related with the book of Exodus, uh, Genesis, Sabbath has a sense of liberation, has the sense of giving respite and rest to any other system, any system that is, uh, that is oppressed and that lives in bondage. Greetings. Welcome to this Prophetic Insights, where we analyze current events as they are fulfilling Bible prophecies. Safe to Serve International, first-time viewers, welcome one, welcome all to this Prophetic Insights. Friends, as you can see clearly, these are signs of the last days. Romans chapter 13 and verse number 11 says, and that knowing the time, that it is high time to be awakened out of sleep. For now your salvation is nearer than when you believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us get rid of sins in our lives and put on the whole armor of Christ's righteousness. No more making provisions for the flesh. And friends, the signs are here. The end of all things is right upon us. The mark of the beast, Sunday, worship by law, is about to be enforced. Husbands, set your homes in order. Mothers, get yourself and children ready. Husbands, fathers, get yourselves ready. Leaders of this movement, prepare the flock. Prepare the people to be spiritually ready, financially ready, physically ready, being in the right location, because very, very soon the crisis is going to hit, and we do not want to be taken by surprise. This is April 20th, 2021, Vatican News. This is a webinar urging common efforts to care for nature. This is Cardinal Turkson. If you look at the top pictures, bottom left, Cardinal Turkson further highlighted that humans have the responsibility to take care of nature. He explained that this comes from the book of Genesis, when at creation, God charged Adam to till and keep the garden. To till was to make the earth productive, while to keep was to ensure that the earth maintains its productive qualities and traits to support life all the time. This imperative of care also extends to the teaching about resting on the Sabbath, which is for human beings also to preserve creation. In other words, if you want to preserve creation, preserve nature, to combat climate change, well, enforce Sunday rest by law. And friends, the Pope has made that clear in his documents, specifically Laudato Si, it's right there, to preserve earth, care for the poor, to preserve nature, combat climate change, enforce Sunday worship by law. Here is the point. This is most recent. That's the point, friends. It is most recent. And this webinar is one of the virtual meetings laying the foundation for COP26 in Scotland, November 2021, when the world leaders will convene to aggressively put in place the policies in Laudato Si to combat climate change, combat the pandemic. And now, in no uncertain terms, Cardinal Turkson, the ambassador of Pope Francis is telling the world 
what the real issue is and what is going to be one of the primary solutions to combat climate change, to combat the pandemic, is that Sunday worship must be enforced by all nations. He went on to say blue words. This imperative of care also extends to the teaching about resting on the Sabbath, which is for human beings also to preserve creation, he said. Sabbath has a sense of liberation and respite. Rest to any system that is oppressed and lives in bondage. Friends, take a listen to this. And this first video clip is to confirm this is a most recent webinar that took place on yesterday. Listen. Yes, over a year. He actually mentions the pandemic. Listen. Yes, over a year ago, we experienced the first shock wave of COVID-19 uh, virus. And it has since led to a collapse of the world e economy and several other social structures on which our lives depend. And friends, just pardon me for the actual video resolution. That's all we could find. The team members here, that's all we could find. And we have to bring it to you. And as you can see, as we were preparing to come live, other information, content, materials rolling in. And I'm putting everything together to bring this breaking news to your attention. I won't be able to cover everything this evening. For this prophetic insight, I will return by God's grace tomorrow during midday power surge at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Listen again. So the church claims that humans are responsible for looking after nature. This comes from Genesis. When at creation, God charged Adam to till and to keep. To till was to make the earth productive to keep was to ensure that the earth maintains its productive uh, qualities and, 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 uh, and traits to support life all the time. Human beings must therefore respect the laws of nature and, 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 and its delicate equilibrium existing between creatures and the world itself. Now, that glitch is not on my end. It's actually on the, on the video itself. Listen, when he mentions now, Sabbath is the solution to preserve the earth. Listen to this. This imperative for care also extends to the teaching about resting on the Sabbath day, which is for human beings also to preserve creation. Indeed, from the book of Deuteronomy, related with the book of Exodus, uh, Genesis, Sabbath has a sense of liberation. Hmm. Sabbath has a sense of liberation. Hold on. Do you remember when you see those pictures of Pope Francis meeting with world leaders? What documents the Pope has made sure to put in the hands of all world leaders? Laudato Si. And even though they talk about... Uh, reducing the carbon footprint and uh, get rid of fossil fuel and this and that. What is the primary solution? Sunday worship by law. Why do we say that? Because based on the Bible, the great controversy between Jesus Christ and Satan, while man is in the middle, it's over worship. Don't you forget that, friends. One more time, listen to this. Resting on the Sabbath day, which is for human beings, also to preserve creation. Indeed, from the book of Deuteronomy, related with the book of Exodus, uh, Genesis, Sabbath has a sense of liberation, has the sense of giving respite and rest to any other system, any system that is, uh, that is oppressed and that lives in bondage. Hold on. So Sabbath, he says Sabbath, meaning Sunday. Sunday, he's telling us, watch carefully, Sunday, he's telling us, brings liberation so what's going to happen to those who refuse to give up god's seven day sabbath and hold to sunday worship when it becomes law hmm? they are going to be in bondage they will be persecuted prosecuted imprisoned 
find. You get the point. And a few are going to be martyred. That's Revelation 13, verse 15 through verse number 17. Wake up, my friends. I was going to share with you a statement where the Pope says that the world needs to think about this question. Is working on Sabbath true freedom? Look it up. He said, is working on Sabbath, meaning Sunday, is working on Sunday freedom. Freedom, liberation. Friends, take a look at this. This is a clear statement that they're no longer hiding that Sunday worship by law is going to be the solution to combat the world's crises. Look at this here. The same article says, the online event titled The Road to COP15, by the way, The Road to COP15, COP26 is going to be in November 2021. Hold on there. Have you ever heard the cliche, all roads lead to where? Those of you are alive. All roads lead to where? All roads lead to Rome. Now, in this day and age, all roads lead to the Vatican. Popery. That's it. Papal domination. The healing of that deadly wound. All right. It says, this online event, red words, drawn from various disciplines of knowledge, including the in indigenous, scientific traditions, the holy scriptures, and the Roman Catholic social doctrine. What for things? From, listen, the indigenous. Friends, many of the indigenous groups are all nature worshippers. And the chief god of nature worshippers is the sun. And Roman Catholicism is based on nature worship. It's based on paganism. It's based on creature worship. All right, friends. They build in science, so-called. And of course, they would sprinkle a little Bible in it, Holy Scriptures. Then they mentioned the social doctrine of the church. What is one of the primary social doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church. What is it called? Common good. What is common good? Give up your individual rights for the rest of us. Common good. Sunday worship by law. And this meeting is laying the groundwork. Look at the blue words at the bottom. For COP26, the United Nations meeting in, Scot in Scotland, 2021. And what did he just say? Sunday must be enforced as the law of the land. Is that clear, my friends? Notice, he went on to say, humans are to be blamed for climate change. Humans are to be blamed for the pandemic. And what is the answer now? Enforce Sunday, worship by law. And what's going to happen? When God's people refuse to honor Sunday, worship when it becomes law. We are going to be called troublers of the people. Blue words. Troublers of the people. Notice, in the same article, it says that Pope Francis is calling for universal fraternity. What does that mean? Universal fraternity. It's a one world unification. One world religion. One world government. What is that fulfilling in the Bible? Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, verse 44. Yes, friends, the mingling of iron, the papacy, miry clay. One sense, nations, miry clay secondary, religions. There it is, my friends. Church and state, we have come to this time. Churchcraft, statecraft. Come on, friends. It goes on to say, the church always raises her prophetic voice, there it is, to provide a spiritual basis for reflection on the protection of the poor, which includes protecting nature. The church always raises her prophetic voice. What does that mean? The church is now influencing 
state leaders, and they would tell us this is a crucial year to enforce the policies laid out in Laudato Si. And what did the Cardinal say in this webinar, Sunday, Worship by Law? All right, friends. Churches, are they weeping for Tammuz? I covered this segment. This segment, I'm going to go through right now. I covered this during midday power search earlier today. Notice, friends, the churches weeping for Tammuz. Nature, the agricultural deity, won't spend time. There it is, friends. They are leading up to Scotland in November 2021. The churches are leading the march, influencing state leaders, and the papacy is a part of this. Again, I covered this earlier. There it is, friends, weeping for Tammuz, which shows the handwriting is already on the wall, and Christ is about to say now, it's over, almost over. We're almost there, my friends. Notice what this, do, do you remember this, friends? It's the churches. It's a good place now to drop this. Listen to this. So, what does it involve? We're inviting churches to begin prayer and worship. Our calling to climate action begins with our faith. Hold a climate service and together as a church family, begin to explore why action for the climate is part of our discipleship. My friends, you have Catholics, the papacy, Pope calling for Sunday worship by law to combat calamities and also pandemics. And now we're seeing apostate Protestants saying the very same. Are we here? Pass that. Won't play that. What are we told? It's church and state union. It's coming, friends. We are here. Notice Cardinal Peter Turkson stresses the importance of ecological conversion. What does he mean by ecological conversion? It's based on the Pope's encyclical, Laudato Si, which part of Laudato Si addresses spiritual things. Is it not Sunday worship by law, ecological conversion? There it is, friends. By the way, look at the second paragraph. Look at Roman number one, number three. You see ecological conversion. And what says Roman number one, number six? Sunday worship by law. There it is, my friends. We are one step closer. And by the way, the ecological conversion is linked to rest. There it is, red words at the bottom, rest. And we are told in GC. Great Controversy, page 588, that papists, apostate Protestants, and worldlings will be a part of a grand movement for the conversion of the world, red words at the bottom, and the ushering in of the long expected millennium. In the Bible, millennium typifies a time of peace as well as a time of judgment, a time of peace when everything is at rest. And what would they be pushing? A sort of conversion, ecological conversion. Listen again, friends, and weep. This imperative for care also extends to the teaching about resting on the Sabbath day, which is for human beings also to preserve creation. Indeed, from the book of Deuteronomy, related with the book of Exodus, uh, Genesis, Sabbath has a sense of liberation, has the sense of giving respite and rest to any other system, any system that is uh, that is oppressed and that lives in bondage. Mm, 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 mm. Have you ever heard it on this level? The Pope's spokesperson, most recent, yesterday this took place, and friends, remember, is the same. Cardinal Peter Turkson, who says, Pope Francis asked us to prepare the future. Who speaks like that? Not prepare for the future. Who speaks like that? Which human being can say prepare the future? We can prepare the future. Friends, the only person who can prepare the future is the person who holds time. Only God holds time. 
But the Antichrist, Pope things, he's God on the earth, prepared the future. This is the Pope's spokesperson. And what did he just tell us, my friends? He? This imperative for care also extends to the teaching about resting on the Sabbath day, which is for human beings also to preserve creation. Indeed, from the book of Deuteronomy, related with the book of Exodus, uh, Genesis, Sabbath has a sense of liberation, has the sense of giving respite and rest to any other system, any system that is, uh, that is oppressed and that lives in bondage. Thank you. So what does it mean to prepare the future now? What are they preparing for? They are preparing to enforce Sunday worship by law. And God's professed people are fast asleep under a self-induced stupor drinking Babylon's wine, my friends. That's it. It's time to be awakened. And that's why earlier I spent so much time, about 45 minutes, talking about all of us receiving former rain, latter rain, and how to have practical communion with Jesus Christ during our personal devotion. Without that experience, we are unprepared. And friends, you think that was something? Let me augment what we just looked at. Look at this now. Headline, Eco-Jesuit. What? Eco-Jesuit? Not only a papal, a, a papal Jesuit, a Jesuit Pope, we have an eco-Jesuit, eco-nature, friends, nature worship. It says, uh, what is in the middle? Keeping up the pressure. Listen to this. Keeping up the pressure, the role of faith communities, the role of faith communities, in COP26, that's coming November 2021, recognizes that in this critical year, critical year for climate action, civil society must demand greater ambition from the national government headed into COP26. The road to COP26, all roads lead to a Sunday law. That's it, friends. All these global conventions, global convocations, global webinars, global meetings. Oh, my friends, they're all leading to a Sunday law. Are we ready? Do we have the righteousness of Christ? Are we in the country? Are we converted? Do we have food ready? Are we assisting others? Are we trying to be independent of the system as much as possible? It's time to be ready, my friends. Is my home ready? Is my wife ready? Is my spouse ready? Is my husband ready? Are my children ready? Come on, friends. Last sentence. Faith-based organizations with their significant numbers, with their significant numbers and clout, that means influence, play an important role. That's the church influencing the state. By the way, do you know, as I said a few days ago, the religious groups form a, a great voting block. How many Catholics are in the world? 1.3 billion and counting. But praise God, God's people will lessen that number. Amen. They will leave Babylon and come into God's present truth. How many, how many number the various religions, Hindus, Buddhist, Jain, yes, nature worshippers, Muslims, Islam, then come into Christianity. My friends, billions, what if all come together and say we want Sunday? What do they all have in common? They worship on Sunday. Muslims, Bow down and revere Fatima. Fatima, that's popery. Come on, friends. Wake up. It's here. It is here. Mm. I'm going to stop it right there, friends. I'm going to pause it right there. If we cannot see... Oh, hold on. Look at this. Headline, April 19, 2021. Why am I going to insert this? It happens tomorrow. Red words, Earth Day. What day? 
Earth Day, which takes place each year on April 22nd, that's tomorrow, is the most widely observed secular holiday across the globe. Why am I bringing this in, my friends? The Sunday law begins here in the United States of America. That means America has to get on board. With the climate agenda uniting with popery. Is that going on? What did President Joseph Biden say? I'm going to re-enter the Paris Climate Accord. I'm going to follow the Pope's agenda. Oh, my friends, and look at what you're seeing on the screen. We are here. I'll say more about this tomorrow, friends. How can we go to rest tonight? Casually, you know what we're told in volume 9, page 48? Go to your rest at night with every sin confessed. Thus we did in 1844 when we expected to meet our Lord. But this great event is nearer now than when we first believed. Be ye also ready in the evening, in the morning, and at noon, that when the voice is heard, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Behold, the son of the Lord is here. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. You may, even though awaken out of sleep, go forth to meet him with your lamps, with your lamps trimmed and burning. Volume 9, page 48, Testimonies for the Church. What must be in our lamps? Oil. A symbol of the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm going to refer you to the midday power surge we covered today, April 21st, during the 12.30 p.m. time period. Friends, by God's grace, we will resume tomorrow for midday power surge. The protest, indeed, continues. Get ready. Remain ready. Get others ready. Why? Maranatha, the Lord is coming.